Medical Fellow Engineers, welcome to our webinar tonight, introducing the fundamentals of SDG as advocated by the United Nations and how engineers can contribute to the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. My name is Alice Chow, leading the SDG Task Force in HKIE. With the COP26 Climate Change Conference approaching, collaborative climate action and carbon neutrality targets at both government and corporate levels have been brought to the limelight. It is now widely recognized that climate action and the wider sustainable sustainability agenda must work together with a number of the UN SDGs being addressed in tandem. To achieve the SDG requires significant climate action and to find climate solutions requires a deep understanding of the big picture of sustainable, sustainable development. The built environment plays a crucial role in making our cities adaptable to the impacts of climate change. And we engineers shoulder the great responsibility. In view of this situation, HKIE has set up a task force to promote SDG in 2019. In 2020, we have organized a webinar and invited Joe De Silva as a presenter to talk about SDGs. We have more than 3,000 people who view this webinar so far. In March 2021, we organized a two-stage event um, entitled Engineering Innovation for Sustainable Development Goals, which comprised a briefing webinar and an interactive workshop, particular focus on waste, land supply, and aging. We understand that the SDG scope is far too wide for engineers to lead in all 17 goals. So we have chosen five numbers of goals 6, 7, 9, 11, and 13 to focus, where we have direct control and major inference. For the other goals, we take a secondary role as facilitator and coordinator to identify key stakeholders to lead in particular sector within the party's speciality. As a whole, we divide all the goals into five major sectors, namely engineering, academic, social welfare, environmental, and finance. We adopt a design thinking process for all parties in a very similar way that we have done for our first workshop. Identify the pain points and challenges in a particular sector, generate ideas and co-create solutions to the problems by involving various key parties before testing them out in pilot projects. This is an ongoing activity. Today, we jointly organize this webinar with ICE Hong Kong Association to introduce the fundamentals of SDGs as advocated by the UN and how engineers could contribute to the 17 SDGs while doing the social, environmental and governance planning for their projects. I would like to pass it to Ms. Shelley Chang, the committee member of ICE Hong Kong Association. Shelley, please. Thank you, Alice. Hi everyone, I'm going to share with you the roadmap that ICE has laid down on pursuing the UN SDGs. In fact, in about three years ago, in October 2018, ICE had organized a global engineering congress in headquarters in London, which turned the, the headquarters into a forum and using the UN SDGs as framework. And by, at that time, they signed a statement of intent to turn, to turn the UN SDGs into reality. Unfortunately, due to a broader impact of the COVID-19 crisis, achieving the SDGs becomes even more challenging nowadays. The World Bank estimates that the crisis will push some 11 million people into poverty. And the ILO estimates some 25 million people could lose their jobs. So we engineers need to add now by directing the governance to invest in the right infrastructure worldwide, which can have a big impact on mitigating these losses. ICE plan states our commitment to collaborating with others to support the achievement of the UN SDGs. 
And over the next five years, we will focus on transforming the productivity of our industry, in part by driving modern methods of procurement and manufacture. In fact, um, IC has already implemented the Project 13 and enabling better infrastructure, to, uh, which has been launched some years ago to bring the stakeholders together to, to bring some ideas on investigating and, and uh, exploration of the productivity and design. Our incoming president, Mr. Ed McCann, he is going to also examine the issue of improving infrastructure productivity within the context of delivering UNSDGs and achieving net zero carbon in his incoming presidential address. If you are interested to learn more about it, please feel free to go into our IC website to register for his presidential address, which will be held online on November the 2nd. As IC is so stressed on the importance on implementing the UN SDGs, even the professional rebuild, one of the attributes, uh, number five, they also laid down the the, um, the, attribute, the attribute also has the elements of the UN SDG in the sustainability attribute uh, starting from 2022. As you can see from the screen here, um, the, 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 the engineers, if they're going to sit for the reviews, they need to be able to describe the origin, purpose and scope of the SDGs and have knowledge of IC's recent initiative in these areas. So no matter you are the engineers going to sit for the professional reviews or even the reviewers who are going to review for the candidates, be prepared to learn and understand more about the UN SDGs. Before we start, I would like to uh, remind you about the house rules for this webinar. The webinar must under no circumstances be recorded and republished in any means without the prior consent of Hong Kong IE and ICE. Mm -hmm. However, ICE may record the audio, video documents and other materials exchanged or built during the webinar session. By joining this webinar, the participant automatically has the consent to given to us to such recordings of the materials to be shared or used by ICE and Hong Kong IE. And at the end of the presentation, there's going to be a Q&A session. And you may raise questions to host via the Q&A tab two in the control panel during the um, presentation. But uh, we will answer the questions after the presentation is given. And one more friendly reminder, certificates will only be issued to those who has who attend the meeting required, who has um, meet the meeting requirement, attendance requirements for this webinar. And already mentioned, no photo taking video and audio recording are allowed during this webinar. So may I now introduce the speaker of today to you guys all. Her name is Engineer Samantha Cohn. She was recognized by North American, American Association for Environmental Education as one of the 30 top young changer makers under the age of 30 in environmental education around the world. She was previously awarded by the Hong Kong SAR Home Affairs Bureau as Hong Kong top 10 outstanding youth. Samantha is now serving as an advisory panel on several government boards and committees to advise strategies in promoting youth development and environmental education programs in Hong Kong. She's also teaching in Hong Kong U at the moment, apart from being a senior engineer in a consultancy company in Hong Kong. In December 2018, she has been selected as the youngest member to serve on the Advisory Council on the Envi Environment, the highest advisory body to the government on environmental matters. Her goal in life is to promote positive change in the world through education and learning. She also founded a social enterprise, Empathy Hong Kong in 2013, to promote empathy for the elderly in Hong Kong. Without further ado, let me introduce as, um, tonight's speaker, Samantha Kohn, to start the presentation for us. Thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Thanks for the kind introduction. So, uh, welcome to the talk today. Thank you, ICE, for the invitation and also HKIE. So, I'm glad to be here to, today to share with you some of the UN SDG stories and also uh, about sustainability, uh, sustainability and sustainable development as a whole. 
So as you can see in this photo, it was taken in uh, 2014. I used to work for the UN right after graduation, um, after, after finishing my bachelor's degree in chemical and environmental engineering. So I spent a year at the UN um, discussing with the diplomats and also the ambassadors about the drafting of the UN SDGs. So I'm now working at Arab as, as a senior engineer in the sustainability group. And I'm also teaching at uh, PolyU as a visiting professor. So today it will be, a, uh, it'll be an, an opportunity to exchange with all of you about the UN SDGs and, and some of your thoughts probably. Um, it'll be good if it, everyone can interact with me while I was, uh, I'm asking you some of the questions. So feel free to throw some of the ideas that you have. Okay, so the first one is what is sustainability? What does sustainability mean to you? So anyone have any thoughts about sustainability? If you have, you can uh, feel free to share in the chat. Anyone share any thoughts? Okay, probably it'll be good to think about what does sustainability mean to you, okay? Probably we can think it in an angle of daily life examples or every day when we wake up, how do we interact with the environment? So in this diagram, I'm going to show you how sustainability works. And oh, there's one response, the care of next generation. Thank you, is indeed a, a, a thoughts that we always think about and we would like to plant the seed for the next generation and they can enjoy the environment that we wish to have as well. So in this diagram, it actually shows uh, uh, the, the relationship between our environment, the world, and also how we can contribute to the environment. So it linked, um, it's like a wheel linked, e linked to each other. So it's good to know their connection and how we can contribute as a, uh, as a citizen. So this, this diagram is that I would like to share with you in a way that how we should view sustainability, okay? So sustainability, I'm sure all of you know, um, there are three key pillars that we talk about when, whenever we mention the, the, the term sustainable development. So in, in this diagram, it, we're trying to view it in the lens of global. As you can see, it's a really colorful um, lens here. So we try to view it in a, in a different perspective. So today, it, we'll be talking about the UN SDG perspective. So you can see they're all in different colors. There are 17 of them. So it means that we have 17 UN SDGs that we'll cover today. So it will also give you a brief introduction of what it's about. Like what Shirley talked about in the beginning is that even in the ICE, I remember I, when I took the ICE exam, they also asked me about um, sustainability. They also asked me about what are the UN SDGs? Do you know anything about it? So it'd be a good time for you to um, have a crash course with me today to understand more about sustainable development. So as I've mentioned just now, briefly, in short, sustainability, there are three key pillars. It will be good if um, all of you will be able to answer this after the end of, of, of this webinar. So there are three key pillars. They are environmental, social, and economic. So they are all closely linked to each other. So some people may describe it as environmental, social, and economic, or sometimes people may say it in three Ps. So can you guess what are the three Ps? Any thoughts? Okay, if not, then the three Ps are actually people, people that's closely linked with social as well, planet that is closely linked with environment. The other P is prosperity that is closely related to economic. So you can see here social, we talk about standard of living, education, community, equal opportunity. So environment, apparently we, we all know about it, right? Natural resources, some of the pollution. And economic, we talk about growth, profit, research, development. So all these are closely linked with each other. So that's why we call it sustainability, the three key pillars. So not sure all of you, um, different countries, all of you may be from different parts of the world. So we do have different global challenges that we face in different countries. So this one is um, actually some of the waste problem that we um, find uh, that, that we always 
come across, not only in Hong Kong, but also some of the um, countries like Asia. So all, some of my, our land views, land fields may be of burden. So it, it's good to resolve it. So some of the global ch challenges that I'm, I'm sharing here is closely linked with the UN SDGs. So this one was taken at one of the um, typhoons um, in Hong Kong. So climate change is a really serious issue that's happening around the world, um, not only in Hong Kong, but also different parts of the world. So this photo is taken in uh, one of the Southeast Asian countries. So um, some of the countries, they may not have clean water. So clean water and sanitation is also an important um, element within sustainable development. So this one, the rich and the poor, I'm sure you can see the difference. So um, it also happens in different countries. We have a huge pot poverty gap uh, at some of the countries. So it's good to understand what's going on in different parts of the, of the world. Aging population is also um, an issue. So um, I remember some of the statistics saying that one in five are uh, elderly. So there are a lot of old people um, in different parts. So this one, I'm sure we should not neglect as well. So when we talk about all the big, uh, huge global challenges, so one of them that's currently really pressing and um, also have some effects to us is the COVID-19. So sustainable development milestones. So you may think about when did it start, right? So when did everything begin and how come everyone started talking about it um, in recent years? And also more companies are, are more involved in developing sustainable development or they're trying to push towards it. It's because of some of the key milestones that I would like to walk with you today. So the first one happened in 1992. So it was around 20, uh, 29, 30 years ago, what, did, what, what happened? So it was the Earth Summit that, that was held uh, in 1992 and the Agenda 21 was signed. So at that time, it was the first time that they mentioned about the term sustainable development. And that was how the, the definition of sustainable development, I'm sure you know this, uh, the definition of it. So that was when the definition came out. So people started discussing about the term sustainable development. And even in Hong Kong as well, it was quite a new term to us. And um, some of the schools in Hong Kong started, even the Education Bureau, they started thinking about how to promote sustainable de the development within schools. So they developed some of the papers and to see how primary schools can emerge such an element into part of their curriculum. So in 1993, one year later, it established a permanent UN development committee. So at the UN back then, there were not specific, there were none of the specific um, committees on sustainable development, but after they signed the Earth Summit, signed the Agenda 21, they realized it's, a, it's time to really set up a committee and have some core members discussing about how to push it forward. So after seven years, uh, in year 2000, they signed the Millennium, Millennium Development Goals, so MDGs, which I'll be touching a, upon later on. So um, MDGs, there are in total eight of them. So it's, it's actually a pre-SDG. So later on, we'll talk about what are actually the, uh, the MDGs. So Millennium also uh, equal to year 2000, so Millennium Development Goals. So that's how they set it up and name it as MDGs. So after 12 years, all right, so there's this real Earth Summit happen again. So you can see after a long while, they happen to have another Earth Summit, okay? A real Earth Summit. So they made a really core cool decision is that um, MDGs will be taken over by SDGs, okay? So later on, we'll cover why from MDGs to SDGs. So in 2014, they formally proposed the 17 development goals. So this was where, when I um, explained in the beginning that I was involved as part of the drafting of the UN SDGs in 2014. So of course, it didn't start with 17, I'm sure, right? For whenever we do policy work, so we came up with a lot of different ideas, different countries, they fight for their own benefits as well. So a lot of people come together, people from different parts of the world, they come together and share about some of the key challenges that they are facing um, in their own country and how they want to make changes to it. 
So that's how the 17 SDGs were developed. So in 2015, what happened? They signed the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, okay? So at the UN, there's a general assembly, which is held um, normally in September every year. So that was one that passed um, last month. So uh, in this September general assembly is a really important event at the UN where all the diplomats will come together. It's an annual event where they share about some of the yearly um, challenges or yearly achievements that they're going to achieve or accomplish in the coming year. So they signed the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which touches upon the SDGs that um, that were raised in 2014, all right? So in 2015, they signed this document. So what's next in 2016, you may wonder. So they officially launched the 17 SDGs in 2016, all right? So this is briefly the milestones that um, covered how sustainable development is being de developed and how the SDGs and how it came to, came to it before it was MDGs and the first uh, in the beginning, they, they started mentioning about sustainable development and that's how it's being developed. So this is the MDGs, okay? There are eight of them. So the, um, some of them, the first one we can briefly go through. The, uh, the first one is, is about poverty and hunger, all right? Second one is more on education, okay? Achieve universal primary education. As you know, some of the countries, some of the maybe developing countries, they may not have a chance to um, enjoy education. So that's why MDGs is uh, MDG2, we name it at, as there are eight MDGs and total eight goals. So the MDG number two is to um, hoping to have a universal primary education. So everyone get a chance to be educated. So the third one is to promote um, gender equality and empower women. So it's a chance to also speak, speak up, okay, for um, different gender. Four is reduce child mortality, all right? Five is on improved maternal health. Six is combat uh, HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases. Seven is ensure environmental sustainability. And last one is develop a global partnership for, for development. So you can see the eight of them, there are a lot of issues that is, it covers, like poverty, hunger, education, um, gender equality, some of the health issues that they cover, sustainability, they use uh, as MDG 7 as a whole to, to, to summarize it. And eventually as MDG 8 is the most important one that they talk about global partnership. So you may wonder, what are the SDGs? Okay, so after in 20 uh, year, year 2000, they developed MDGs. And after 15 years, they developed the SDGs. So it was from eight goals to 17 goals. But then you can see a lot of them are pretty similar to each other. For example, like I talked about just now, MDG number eight is totally similar to, I, I mean, it's exactly the same as SDG 17, which is the most important one that requires partnership for the goals. Some of them that covers health that we talked about just now. So we have SDG number three on health, SDG number four on um, quality education, and also gender equality, um, SDG number five. So there are a total um, 17 SDGs that's covered um, in, the, in the UN SDG. So some of them, they talk about poverty and also for MDGs as well, a little bit on poverty. As, uh, SDG two on hunger. So you can see as a whole, not only about that, but then there was one MDG about sustainability. You remember that, right? So in SDG, they try to expand it a bit more. So from just environmental sustainability, they try to break it down into smaller pieces. Like number six is on clean water and sanitation. All right. Number seven is on affordable and clean energy. So some of the sustainable cities and communities. And the three of them are pretty, uh, pretty closely linked to each other. Number 13 is on climate action, when we talk about climate change. Number 14 is on life below water that we talk about some of the marine um, marine mammals or marine organisms. And number 15 is about life on land. So as you, you can see here, MDGs and SDGs, there is a, closely, um, a close relationship with each other. It's like an expansion of the MDGs. But then we're trying to push away, push forward more on environmental sustainability when they had only one goals, but now they have more than five, I would say. So there were altogether one, 193 member states 
okay, involved in the SDG drafting process. So there are altogether 17 goals and 16 targets, okay? So is it, it is a universal call to action to end poverty, okay? Protect the environment, protect the planet, and ensure all people enjoy peace and prosperity. So that's also the aim of sustainability as a whole. So I'm going to briefly touch upon what, how, how each SDG works. What is it about? So you may wonder, okay, number one, no poverty. So how do they define poverty? Okay, it states that income less than US dollar 1.25 per day. So what's the purpose of this SDG, right? It's hoping to eradicate extreme poverty by year 2030. The poor have equal rights to economic resources. The poor are not vulnerable to climate change. Okay, so for this um, SDG is really important to um, some of the poverty gaps that when, when we talk about it, some of the, we are hoping to eradicate extreme poverty. So SDG two is on zero hunger. So many in the world, especially women and children are suffering from hunger and malnutrition. So we're lucky that um, in, in Hong Kong or in some of the um, countries, we are not, we may not be facing uh, such um, issue. So the purpose of this zero hunger SDG is to um, protect some of the small farmers, okay, and malnutrition, invest in more research to make farming more productive, okay. So SDG three, good health and well-being, especially now at the COVID season, I'm sure all of you will be really aware of this um, SDG goals. So the purpose of the purpose of this is to promote healthy lives and well-being for all at all ages, which is the key at all ages. It's only uh, not about old people but also the young, the youth, um, some of the young olds, or even people of our age, this is all essential to sustainable development. Because without good health, we may not be able to develop our country, develop our city into a sustainable place to live in. So the purpose of this goal is to call for universal health coverage, okay? Increase healthcare workforce, reduce illness and, and death and tackle some of the global challenges, like some of the diseases like malaria or even tuberculosis and COVID. So SDG4, like I highlighted in the beginning, so it is foundation to improve people's life. So the purpose of this SDG is the need for access to universal level education, some of the vocational training, um, entrepreneurship skills, and help the children in your community community to read, because some of the some of the kids in different some of the developing countries they may not have a chance to study, or even they may not have a chance to go to school. The school may be quite far from their home, so it, it takes effort for them to be educated as well. So SDG five is on gender equality. So it is a fundamental human right. Okay a foundation for a peaceful, prosperous, and sustainable world. So the purpose of this SDG is to ensure um, equal share of leadership opportunities and responsibilities for women and freedom from discrimination and violence. So I'm sure um, nowadays, a lot of uh, companies, they do offer more opportunities for women in, in leadership in different roles, not only in consultancy, but also in government and also in contractor. So later on, I'll be linking all the SDGs with us as engineers, how we can play a part, how we can contribute as an engineer, maybe in our design, maybe in our uh, discussion with clients. So some of the thoughts that you can also think along while I'm talking about all the SDG as, a, as an introduction. Think about your contribution, how you can contribute. So SDG 6 is on clean water and sanitation. So water is really essential, right? We're hoping to have clean water and accessible water and um, so that we don't get ill, so we don't fall sick. But uh, water scarcity affects 40% of the world's population. So it's actually pretty, pretty critical. Um, so that's why we need to have research. We need to have technologies to understand uh, how we can be accessible to clean water. And of course, we need to make sure that we don't, um, we don't waste the water as well while we, we are consuming the water. SDG 7 is on affordable and clean energy. So about 1.3 billion of people globally do not have access to energy, uh, electricity. So the purpose is to encourage renewable sources. 
So nowadays, we always talk about decarbonization, work with the trend of Paris Agreement. So some of the renewable sources that we can consider in our own country, maybe some of the uh, solar panels, some of the wind turbines, different sources of renewables that we can, we can consider in our own city. So we can um, also make use of energy efficient light bulbs and appliances. SDG 8 is on decent work and econo economic growth. So about 75 billion people between age 15 and 24 are unemployed and out of school globally. So um, some of the countries, they may not get a chance, some of this uh, youngsters, some of the children, they may not get a chance to go to school, like I said before. So the purpose of this is to close the gap of unemployment. So they may be unemployed because they didn't get a chance to go to school and they, it's hard for them to look for a job. So it, we're hoping in this goal to aim, aim at closing the gap of an, um, unemployment and apply some of the innovation to enhance economic growth. For example, we can think of digitalization, some of the new invention that we can we can develop to enhance economic growth, some of the apps, some of the uh, technology that we are currently talking about. SDG 9 is on industry, innovation, and infrastructure. So this is really closely linked to us because we always invest in, investment in infrastructure are critical. So without infrastructure, we don't get a chance to um, to share some of our engineering expertise. So with infrastructure, we build our own city, right? We build the city for ourselves. So the purpose of this goal is to foster a more innovative and environmentally sound approach to industrial, industrial development. So we're hoping to brainstorm innovative ways to repurpose old materials. So when we talk about repurpose, it's something like upcycling. So this, this goal is actually to facilitate you to use another method, innovation. So some of the innovative um, ways to think about matters is like design thinking, like Alice talked about in the beginning. So design thinking is another approach um, how we think about matters from, uh, from an issue, from a prototype and to the end product. So this is a way how we can approach matters as an engineer as well. So SDG 10 is on reduce inequality, okay? The world is massively unequal, so we have to adopt policies to pay more attention to the needs of different, um, different people of different colors, disadvantaged and marginalized populations, okay? And the next point is really important as well. We need to develop a safe and responsible development environment, okay? Safe and responsible environment to make sure that whenever we go to the city, we feel safe, okay? Some of the design, uh, we can think about how to ensure somebody can be saved in an environment, maybe with more lighting, with more um, security. So this is also pretty critical. So number 11, sustainable cities and communities. So more than half of the world population lives in cities, okay? So the purpose of this goal is to address some of the issues. Like when we talk about sustainable cities, there are a lot of people, whenever we, we work as engineers, we work closely with planners, architects, surveyors, um, you name it, right? So we need to address issues together, like transportation, some of the disasters, preparedness, preservation of culture and natural heritage. So we do involve um, different disciplines of engineers in the projects, like what we work on every day. So we work closely with some of the transport engineers, some of the civil engineers, or even environmental engineers in thinking a solution in how to build a sustainable city. So we also encourage in this goal, encourage the use of public transportation and cycling to keep our cities clean, the air clean. So next is responsible consumption and production. So waste is a really cr uh, critical global issue, like I showed in the first photo um, of global challenges just now. So the purpose of this goal is to reduce food waste, okay? Exercise sustainability practice and educate people on the impact of their lifestyle choices. So some of the people, they may not know like, oh, the, uh, the choice that they have chosen is actually contributing to some of the carbon emissions. So it's good to remember the three R's, recycle, reduce and reuse, okay? So SDG 13 is on climate action. So climate change is affecting everyone and everywhere, uh, everywhere globally. So in 2016, there's actually the Paris Agreement, okay? So it also guides nations to commit to limit global warming. 
So the purpose of this goal is to educate young people on climate change and to work together with different stakeholders in achieving the goal of Paris Agreement. 14 is on life below water. So the world's ocean are overfished, underprotected and stressed from climate change and pollution. So the purpose of it is to avoid plastic bags, to keep the ocean safe and clean and to conserve the environment underwater. 15 is pretty similar. It's about life on land. Okay, so some of the forests combat um, desertification and remove land uh, depredation. So the purpose is to protect the environment through some of the tree planting and ensure biodiversity uh, in the city as a whole. Next is um, on peace, justice, and strong institution. So access to justice uh, for all is really um, important at different levels, okay, for um, accountable institutions as well. The purpose is to reduce violence and to torture and reduce corruption. So lastly, when I talk about this SDG 17, as you can see, it looks like the Olympics, okay? So some of those um, circles, they're altogether five circles, different from the Olympics, they have six circles. So every country and every sector has a role to play in achieving the SDGs. So we need to ensure countries have what is needed in achieving the rest of the SDGs. So emphasize the need for partnership and collaboration. And even for, for the webinar today, it's also a partnership between ICE and Hong Kong IE. So it's a chance to collaborate and share the thoughts on SDG to more people around the world. So this is an overview that I would like to summarize it in one diagram. So you can see um, it, is, it looks like a balance, um, outcomes for cities and for society and outcomes for planet. So what is the most important you, you can see here is actually the SDG 17, which is the core that supports both sides of the balance, outcome for society and outcome for planet. So on this side, on the right side, it's more about sustainability. It's more about um, environmental sustainability, like we touched upon in the beginning. So on the left side, it's more about society, okay? Some of the um, lives, improving lives, fair and just society, economic prosperity that we talk about. So in the middle, you may think, what is in the mid middle? So in the middle is more is the most important to us as engineers because we, we do play a role and we are here to ensure safe, inclusive, sustainable and resilient infrastructure for our cities. So that's why we put it in the middle, which these are for us as engineers. We play a role into this. Number six, seven, nine, eleven are something that we do design um, in some of our day work. Okay, so for today, I'm going to highlight five, uh, three key areas that three key goals that I'm going to touch upon, which are SDG five, okay, on gender equality, SDG eight on decent work and economic growth, SDG ten on reduce inequalities. So we'll be talking about our role as engineers and how we play a part. So three questions that um, you can have it in your mind while I'm, I'm flipping through the slides or some of the thoughts that you can share with me while you, you, you can type in the chat. So what can we do as engineers? How can we contribute and how can we play a part? Okay. So for SDG 5, for each SDGs, they do have targets to achieve, okay? I'm not going to read all of them, but then in short is that gender equality, we need to think about balancing um, not only women, not only men get a chance, but also women get a chance. So uh, is, the purpose is to end violence and um, equal rights that we are going to talk about, equal rights um, and empowerment of women in different sectors um, in, in, in our day-to-day day -day work and ensure um, we have full participation for both men and women in decision-making and also in leadership. So these are some of the data that I found and I would like to share with you as well. So women's equal participation in decision-making is crucial, especially for um, COVID-19 response and recovery. So you can, you can see uh, women rep represent more than one fourth of the population, okay? Violence against women, one in, three, uh, one in three women have been subjected to physical, 
or sexual violence, so at least one in their lifetime since the age of 15. So lastly is 49 countries lack laws protecting women from domestic violence. So there are actually three key words that I would like to bring upon is that first is on safety, right? When we talk about some of the violence, um, safety is really tricky, um, sorry, critical to us. Second is security. So legislation or some of the laws may be able to protect us. So security is also really important. Third is inclusiveness. So we may need to, uh, we may need to remember, we have to remember that we need to be inclusive, okay? Include not only uh, different genders, but also people at different ages as well. So this is a book that I would like to share with you. It's pretty inspiring, okay? So it's called Invisible Women. Okay, so this book actually shares about um, some of the examples that they, um, people see in, in a different world about some of the data bias in a world designed for men. So they, they fight for women as well in this book. So um, some of the taglines that I, I, have, I have screen cap here is that 71 of women wear protective clothing that isn't designed for women's bodies, okay? And the average smartphone is 5.5 inches, too big for the average woman's hand, okay? So some thoughts that we can have. So the design of our buildings, public spaces, and infrastructure help to shape the culture of our society. These play a major role in gender equality. So as engineers, how can we contribute? Remember the first question that we have. So I have some suggestion and probably if you have any thoughts, you can also share um, within the chat as well. So the first one is design suitable facilities for women. So I remember this when I was traveling in Malaysia. So I remember there's a really, um, in the MTR, they call it MRT. So in, in, in like Hong Kong, we have a train system. So they have a special something called ladies coach. Okay. So in this ladies coach is apparently only for ladies. So maybe the train they run through until late night. So some of the women may be worried to be um, going alone on this, being alone on the street. So they rather choose to go into ladies coach. So there's one, one of the cots uh, with, within um, the train where there's ladies coach and they feel secure um, beyond your home, okay? They feel secure. So this is some of the design uh, facilities that we can think of when we're doing design for um, different countries, okay? So next is um, expert calling for two women toilets for every male one to address gender imbalance. So you can see here, the queue is really long for this is female toilets, okay? Whereas male, male we can't see anyone queuing for it. So um, nowadays, some of the countries, especially in Europe, European countries, there are all gender restroom that will allow um, less queue. So actually, some of the statistics show that women takes up to 2.3 times as long as men to use the toilet. So sometimes we, we may wear our makeup or sometimes it may take more time for girls and women to use the toilet. So sometimes when we're designing toilets for infrastructure, okay, so it's good to think about whether do we need to have more toilets or consider all gender restroom as well. So second one is, second point is that design for inclusion. So you can see this is a really dark place. So it's actually a bus stop, okay? If I don't tell you a bus stop, maybe you may wonder it is a, a resting area. So this is actually a, a bus stop, but at a really dark area. So people may think that um, women may be scared to walk alone in the street at night. So it's good to encourage safe transit for women, okay? So look at this as an example. So it's good to have more lights, more lamp, uh, lamp posts, so that um, you, will feel in, you won't feel insecure. So one of the BBC news is that um, it also shows India's long, dark and dangerous walk to the toilet. So one in three women lack access to safe toilets. The lack of adequate toilet provision in, is a health, public health problem for both sexes. Water Aid reports that girls and women collectively spend 97 billion hours a year finding a safe place to relieve themselves. So is it really important? Some of the statistics that shows when we design, we may need to consider safety, okay? Safety and also inclusion. 
So third, how can we contribute is that construction industry culture. Okay, so there are more and more women um, joining the engineering industry. So it's good to um, get involved, get them involved in the construction industry as well. Okay, put in place gender-friendly laws to instill a culture of equality and empowering women to be powerful agents of change. So next is on SDG 8, okay? It's on decent work and economic growth. So just now I've been talking about some of the economic growth, how to facilitate. So we need to think about some of the innovations, okay? Some of the rights we need to protect ourselves or even develop some of the strategies, how we can employ more people at different ages, employ youth or employ, um, or we can develop some of the training to encourage work opportunities, okay? So it's also beneficial to, our, beneficial to us and also beneficial to tourism at the end. So some of the statistics that I've got here is that the pandemic has led to the loss of equivalent to 255 million full-time jobs. Okay, so it's really huge, uh, a huge number that we can foresee, we can actually um, experience, it, okay? Economic recovery is underway. Pandemic will lead to an increase in youth not employed in schools or in training. So roughly half of the world population still lives on $2, two US dollars per day. So it's worthwhile to think about how we can um, develop more job opportunities, develop more training, develop, develop more opportunities for school. So the built environment is essential in enabling sustainable growth and productivity through providing well-functioning infrastructure, buildings and spaces. So as engineers, how can we contribute? Like I said just now, the use of local, uh, local labor, develop more job opportunities and collaborations. So probably some of the green, you know, green, uh, green jobs that we some, uh, somehow talk about, green jobs um, so that they can enter the labor market or more opportunities for people to enter engineering field and understand more about how we as engineers are doing at, in our day-to-day -day work. So apart from that, also include not only men, but also women um, joining our industry, okay? Promoting health and uh, promoting growth and also job opportunities. So second one is provision of a safe and fair working environment. So I found this um, interesting um, diagram we'd like to share. So this person saying, for a fair selection, everybody has to take the same exam. Please climb that tree. So you can see different animals, they, they, are, they have the same exam is to climb that tree. So we need to ensure that everyone get a fair, being treated fairly and also in a safe working environment. So for SDG 10, we need to think about how we as engineers can contribute, okay? SDG 10 is on reduce inequalities. So we talk about briefly just now is some of the promote universal um, social economic inclusion, okay? So some of the responsible um, policies that we can incorporate and also encourage development um, for different countries, some of the assistance, how we can provide assistance to people. So the proportion of the global population who are refugees has more than doubled since 2010, okay? So actually for every 100,000 persons, 300, uh, 311 are refugees, okay? So ex exploitation of natural resources is a contributor to inequality fueling conflicts worldwide. Climate change and disasters have a, a direct impact on the poorest and vulnerable and contribute to existing inequalities within and across countries. So actually this reminds me of something that I'd like to share with you as well. I remember when we were drafting the UN SDGs, SDG 10 was not one of them because some of the countries may feel like, oh, inequality is not really important. But then one of the countries that they um, shared their thoughts is that they realize that um, it is something that we must, we must um, help in hand in reducing inequalities, okay? So it is really critical because we need to make sure we share equal opportunities 
and equal rights to all of all of the people, which is also the core of SDGs. And when we talk about SDG, I talk about the three P, right? Apart from prosperity, without people, we may not be able to develop a safe environment, a safe, um, a sustainable city. So people is really critical. So the first thing that we need to do is how to treat everyone equally. So inclusion is not a tick box exercise, remember, it's not a tick box. It is vital to achieving the SDGs. So as engineers, how can you contribute, okay? So we need to learn to design for diversity, okay? So we need to try to understand the culture of uh, different people, people from different countries, um, different colors. We need to try to understand their cultures, their values, and also, uh, do not discriminate them, which is also something that we shouldn't do. We need to understand more about their stories, talk to them, um, and develop relationship with, the, uh, with these uh, different people from different diversity. So facilities for a vulnerable user group. So um, this is a photo that was taken in um, Abu Dhabi, where um, there's an ATM specially designed for wheelchair users. So you can see this is pretty convenient for them. You know, some of the ATMs, maybe in Hong Kong, they may be uh, quite tall, like um, it, it won't be accessible for wheelchair users. So when we're doing design, we may need to make sure that, for example, some of the MTR stations, when um, some of the ticket buying um, areas, we need to make sure that we consider wheelchair users as well. So um, it's good that our, our, we have something called the barrier-free access design manual, that um, when we talk about design, especially for um, sustainability, we have uh, some of the green certifications that we look at, like Beam Plus. There's also a requirement where the buildings, the development should consider barrier-free access when they're designing their facilities, okay? So we can see some of the ramps, okay? This is a, uh, a, an entrance in a, in a development in Hong Kong. So some of the ramps may be helpful for um, facilities for vulnerable group users, user groups. So we need to bear in mind when we do design, not only for uh, ourselves, but also for people, everyone that is, they are able to use the facilities together with us. So expression of culture and religion. So when we talk about reduce inequality, like I said just now in the beginning, in the first point, we need to understand the culture, okay? Apart from the culture, we need to understand the religion as well, okay? So it, it's good to understand about different stories and different happenings um, at different religion or even culture. So lastly is to ensure that we have different job opportunities and community engagement. So like I talked about just now, people is a really cool asset to a society. So job opportunities, it, it not only happen in this SDG number 10, also happen in SDG number eight when we cover economic growth just now. So community engagement is really important because we all get together, um, which also aligns with SDG number 17. We talk about partnership, okay? So community engagement is a chance to promote um, promote, uh, for example, some of the agreements, okay, some of the opportunities to work together and provide equal and fair access to different things. So lastly, I would like to talk about this diagram. So um, this is uh, developed by the World GBC, okay, World Green Building Council. So it talks about how SDG can play a role. How we can talk about when we talk about sustainability, we may talk, we may need to consider how we build sustainable the buildings. Okay, so it is a good diagram, so you can have a close look at some of the SDG that we touch upon today, especially for SDG number ten is for people, like I talk about just now for people, mm -hmm. right? For people, so SDG number um, number five is not is not here, but then we as a whole need to think about need to consider all these different SDGs while we're, we're developing a sustainable building in order to create a, a more partnership and more different opportunities for people and especially more job opportunities. So some of them are for climate. So you can see here on the side, some of them is for sustainability, environmental sustainability. Some of them are for people that we can see here um, in the middle and some are for economics. So these three actually ties back 
with the definition of the three pillars, environmental, social, and economic. And after all, ultimately, it's the big goal up here is number 17 is on partnership uh, for the goals, where we all work together, different parties, um, different disciplines, and different pro profession. We all work together in developing a sustainable city. So you must remember one key point, uh, one takeaway that I will hope uh, all of you can um, can uh, like learn from it today is that all goals are universal, okay? Um, they are all equal and we, we need to make sure how we should combat some of the global challenges. As you can see from the 17 SDGs, they are all global challenges that are happening in the world, not only in, in the current city that we're living in, but also all parts of the world. So all goals are universal. We need to bear in mind um, how we can strive for the goals and how we can make a move and make contribution in building a more sustainable city. So that's the end of my talk. Um, so thank you for listening and uh, open for a Q&A. Thank you, Samantha. Uh, we've got a comment from the floor um, from Alice, uh, stating that agree on the toilet issues, but this is generally driven by statutory requirements, not by engineers. Engineers can design only in accordance with current regulations. What is your view on this, Samantha? And do you think we Hong Kong government has done enough on like pursuing uh, implementing the UN SDGs? Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you for the question. So nowadays, actually with the Paris Agreement that I brought up on just now, so actually government is trying to do more on, um, especially on sustainable development, like for example, decarbonization. So we how we can walk towards with it. So I understand the point that you bring a point uh, about toilets. So um, actually this point on decarbon decarbonization, I will use decarbonization as an ex example to illustrate. So decarbonization is something that brought up uh, since 2016 of, because of the Paris Agreement. So all, of, all the countries are actually trying to act towards it because um, the deadline is coming, right? 2030 is coming. So uh, all the countries are trying to work together closely, hand in hand, partnership, like I talked about just now. But then we need to make sure that some of the codes, some of the building codes, some of the ordinances have to match with the, the goal of achieving decarbonization. So that is why, um, like, like I said, uh, I will use decarbonization as, as an example to illustrate is that um, the government is trying to move forward to that direction, but then it may take time to make a change. So it's not suddenly we can um, change it to um, developing some of the new toilets, but then gradually they are hearing us, they're hearing our voices in making changes. I can see uh, Paul Chan is among the participants today. Uh, yes. Paul Chan is in fact uh, one of our um, Hong, Hong Kong IE UNSDG task force member. Yep. So Paul, would you like to say a few words um, to supplement on the promo promotion of SDGs? Well, well, I, I think that the, 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 the going back to the questions by the audience about the regulations. Now, we have to bear in mind the regulations, they are the you know they were they were they were they were they were built you know some time ago. As culture changes, as time changes, regulation ought to be changing to match with the culture change, right? And to do that, right, um, we we need to come up with to listen to empathize, empathize, listen to the women, uh, have some figures to say you know women spend two or two point three times more than men do in the toilets. That's why they're queuing up. So we got we got we got to listen to empathize listening, agreeing on the problem problem pain points, and only then you can come up with with all these figures to justify there's a need to change the regs, and then going back to you know, in Hong Kong you're going back to BD on the sanitary treatments and uh, and regulation said that the uh, you know the women toilet ratio and the men's ratio ought to be changed, and they, they ought to be changed based on scientific reasons and justifications. So that you know, that's the echo that I have with, um, um, you know, on that on that particular questions. Remember, regulations are, are just words, and they are, and, and they are, they are, they are things, right? They're not life. But we are alive. We, we want to hear ESG. We ought to be uh, listening to what how how the world is changing, and then we we'll make changes to our regulations to suit. So that's my response to it. Um, going forward, 
Uh, I mean, listening to what Samantha just explained, you know, the MDGs, you know, having eight elements is, 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 is bad enough, but having 17 elements is even worse. So how can we focus? And this will, it, it goes back to um, Alice's when, when, when Esther started off, the John Chair lady started off with uh, saying that as engineers, Hong Kong IE and ICE, as engineers, we realize that there's, there's, out of the 17, there are certain elements which we're aware of good at. We are the domain experts and we know how to control it. And that's why we should take the lead in empathizing it, finding the, finding the, the problems is and, and revising the solutions. But when we come to 17, right, when we come to 17 and, and having collaborations, that, that doesn't mean that we collaborate amongst engineers. That means collaborating amongst the different sectors, the sectors in the community, the sectors in, en in engineering, the sectors in academia, the schools, the sectors in, um, uh, in the environment. Uh, and then we need, we need all parties in the five sectors to work together to, to generate or to co-create solutions which are beneficial to society, right? So, so that's, the, um, that's the ultimate aim. You, 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 you got this balance. It's always the 17, which is underpinning the all 16, all 16 goes above. So the middle six, seven, nine, and 11, they are the engineers, but that doesn't mean that we don't have to care about the one on the left and the right, but they're being taken care of by the champion of the other sectors. But they themselves can't do alone because they may be the domain expert on themselves on, on, on say for instance, school, schools, right? But then they, they, have, they will come to a point where they need the engineers to help them to, 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 to find more digital solutions, computerized to more powerful computer to help to bring forward the education into a, a much expedient way. So that's the example I'm, I'm, I'm giving. So the next step <clears throat> we're moving into from the introduction of today, we will move, we'll have a workshop together on the 23rd of this month, whereby we encourage engineers of the different disciplines within Hong Kong IE and ICE for that matter, to, um, to, to, to put yourself forward. And we have three, I think we have three um, hot issues we want to, we want, we want to, to address. Um, sorry, I'm not too sure whether we, we've got the three issues on, on, on the screen, we can, we can bring it forward. Shelly, um, Shelly, can we do it? Um, I haven't had the flyer with me right now, but after this session, um, okay. the flyer oh, for the workshop is going okay. to be given to all the participants of tonight for them to learn more about the details of the workshop that we are going okay. to arrange on the 23rd to see whether any of them are interested to join. And then through that interactive workshop, we can discuss further mm -hmm. on the SDGs, the, the, in, in fact, the seven SDGs that we can cover, as well as focusing on certain SDGs that we will uh, talk about around the topics that we have um, we, we, have okay. <clears throat> um, we, have, we have chosen three topics mainly, um, yep. you know, one on education for younger generations, which straddles across a few SDGs, and then one is on the environment, um, which is, you know, is, is basically the three elements on the right, um, you know, waste, treatment, water, and then there's another one on uh, manpower, right, about yep. uh, adopting innovation, adopting digital technologies, for transformation to help us through to use less manpower to do just amount the same amount of work. But that doesn't mean that we are, we're trying to create unemployment by putting in innovative technologies. What we're saying is that we if we we want to put you know we want to set aside or we need to identify all the main um, actions where, 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 where things can be done by computer, let it be done by computer, and then extracting those human resources out to do more valuable stuff, right? So these are the area where we're trying to, um, uh, as you see, every, as, uh, as soon as you see the flyers, which Shed is going to distribute very soon, then you can express your interest in certain areas. Once you've identified that you express, you know, your interest in certain topic, then I want you to go before to come before the twenty third, right? To empathize. If you're interested in certain topic, don't just go blank handed into the workshop. Do some research by yourself between from now until before you attend the meeting on the 20th, the workshop on the 23rd. So you're equipping yourself, listening to you know where the pain points are. You, you, you now you've got to stop from um, 
from being a traditional or conventional bog standard engineers like myself, where, where we are good, we're trained to find solutions, right? We are, we're so used to problems giving to us, and then we just find solutions to the problem. But this time around, I want you to think the reverse. It's time to change. We ought to be thinking of what to identify what are our genuine problems with our society. So we need to emphasize listening to users. And then the second step is to start up to the frame, the scope. Okay, once we, are, we, we identify the pain points, then we want to see, okay, where are these pain points are the real pain points which our society needs. Equipping, equip yourself with that in that area. Then you come forward to a workshop and then we do the co -co, co, um, we do the ide ideation on the, on the 23rd, agreeing on, 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 on co-create solutions to find solutions. Then we come up with a time program, uh, an action plan for, for, for a test or pilot projects to be, to be done. So these are the type of new, new design thinking workshop process um, that, that would help us to, for engineers to generate solutions which are users, which are useful and helpful to society in the short term and medium term. The long term, I think our CE have announced in the policy in her policy address about you know developing the north, north the north part of uh, of, 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 of Hong Kong um, a region here. That's a really long term, 20 year you know, program. So we are we are here now here to help her out in trying to identify what our immediate problems. Hot pain points and find find solutions, uh, and, and let it and let it run and help our society in the short term and medium term run. So that's the whole purpose of our of our workshop on the twenty third. So I think that's about what, what I what I like to say. I mean, in terms of um, um, the gender equality and um, is 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 a full demonstration and 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 and, um, and manifestation tonight tonight because I'm the only male here. As you can see, the member is, 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 is a lady, and then so, so is our chair. Oh, 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 participants. And the MC. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a woman manifestation, demonstration of, you know, we value, we value input from our, our, from our opposite sex. So don't, don't worry, I'm all in for that. So I hope that every single one of you uh, will have that in mind uh, and then come forward, uh, put yourself forward, um, show interest, do your research, and come forward on the 23rd of October. Okay, we've got some more questions from the floor. Maybe um, I can read this out so that everyone can um, discuss together. Mm. Um, are 17 SDGs relevant to distribution of COVID-19 vaccines to underdeveloped countries? Is it relevant? Is it, what was the question? Is it relevant, you mean? Yeah, is it relevant? Oh, I, I think that... The distribution think of, of the vaccines. <laughs> I, I can I can think of a few. I mean, I'm not, not too sure where Samantha would. Well, do you want to say something first, Samantha? You want me to uh, express my, my view? Well, maybe Samantha say uh, mm. say a few things. So the uh, you mean the distribution of the COVID nineteen vaccines, right? To underdeveloped countries. To underdeveloped countries. Yeah. Are these relevant to the seventeen SDGs? Mm -hmm. So it's actually closely linked to when when we talk about uh, vaccines, it's closely linked to um, good health and well being which is pretty, uh, critical to us, okay, SDG number three, uh, because without, without uh, we're talking about vaccines and good health as well, okay? And also we, we need to ensure that uh, we have SDG number 10 is also for a fair, just, and society, which I think this is also something that we can look upon when we're talking about um, some of the uh, poor, the rich and the poor as well. So this is something what we're talking about um, in this diagram. We can focus on um, this side of that of the diagram about outcomes for the society. Okay, Paul, you have anything to add? No, well, that's that's that's. Um, I totally agree. That's a direct, mm -hmm. the most direct uh, link with the delivery of um, of the vaccine to the underdeveloped country. Mm -hmm. The only thing that I can. I can think of indirectly on is, is on the uh, is on the um, uh, uh, to make it to deliver it. You know what? You know what? What's the impact? You know the impact is obviously bring bring those people health back on mind, and they, they have to be taught too. So quality education is is one. They have to be taught that you know mm. they have to take. You know del delivering a vaccine is one thing, but having this jab into your body, you have to have education because they're so there's the steel. We're still not getting up to the 70 and 80% mark because people are not 
quite convinced that this vaccine should help them. So obviously cost quality education is one, you know, they have to be taught, they have to be, they have to be educated, that, you know, this vaccine is, 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 is designed to cater for this, this virus and, 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 and then this will do them good and it doesn't do it, create much um, harmful side effects. So quality education that I can think of. And then the other indirect thing is, is, is obviously to do the economy. Uh, decent work, economy growth. Now, I'm sure that COVID-19 is, is, is having a big, massive blow to the world economy, global economy. And having this delivery to, the, to, you know, to, to, to any parts of the world where they develop and developed would bring us back up to, to, to big economical recovery as soon as we can. So, so that, that's, 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 that's the SDG 4 and 8, which is, which is an indirect one or medium-term one. Right? Sure. Okay, thank you. We've thank got you. more questions to Samantha from the floor. Um, okay, and another one is China have made a great effort to fight against the poverty in recent years with achievements and now changing their goal to share of wealthness. Comparatively, do you think Hong Kong can do better in this aspect? Well, of course we can. Um, there is always room for improvement, especially for um, the rich and the poor. So um, that's why some, sometimes it's good to develop some of our position, positioning um, for our, for, for example, some of the thoughts. Um, nowadays, a lot of youth, they are also raising some of their opinions, suggestions to also to the government or like policymakers so that they can understand um, some of our thoughts. And especially nowadays in the government, they also take in some of um, our, like people of our age, youngsters, uh, to take part in advisory councils of the environment. So we do have a voice in raising some of the issues that we see. There's always room for improvement, especially like, like you said just now, uh, the world wealth problem and also poverty problem. So uh, we, I would say that uh, we all have a, have a voice. Um, it's good to have our own position in, in things. And it's good that we, we get a chance to raise some of our opinions um, at different channels so that our voice can be heard and some actions can be taken. Like Paul has mentioned just now is that um, policies requires, uh, is closely linked with cultural change um, and people change as well. So it's time for us to voice out. If not, then um, it, it will be difficult to improve ourselves or improve the country that we're living in. Okay, um, yeah. another one. Another one, um, you mentioned partnership SDG 17 is the most important one. Can you give some examples who the engineers shall partner with? Business partners and the objectives usually are very different and normally cannot be free. How to promote this collaboration? What are the drivers? Mm. So um, first of all, um, when we're talking about partnerships, it's good to understand um, and it's good to look for some of the partners that share the same value or same vision as ourselves. So uh, a lot of companies, they may not be able, they, they may not have a good understanding of the SDGs. So when you're talking, when we're trying to talk to them about partnership for SDGs, they may not be sure what to do with it. So I think it's good to have a focus. So there are altogether 17 goals, right? So whenever we pitch or when we, whenever we approach some of the partners that we would like to look for, I think it's good to start small, like how we start a business, uh, how we start a new company itself as well. So when we look for um, our, so when we talk about partnership, we need to know our niche. So what are we good at? Let's say, for example, we're an environmental company. So we can say, like, we look for a company similar to us, share the similar values, share the same similar vision. So we're all tackling, going to us, tackling climate, climate change. So, um, and then that company will be like, okay, you are also in the same, um, on the same vision that we're looking at. So it will be easier for you to talk to them on some of the points that you would like to um, share or make changes. So this is the way how we start when we build partnerships. So not only in the, in the, in the, in the business world, but also um, when we look for partners, it's also something similar to, to this uh, scenario that we talked about, I, I shared just now. So it's all about how we, um, we choose the theme because 17 is a lot. So we narrow it down, choose something that you would like to focus and start small. 
So start from, for example, SDG 7, uh, 13 first and um, develop your relationship with the, with the person, with the client that, or even with the company that you would like to partner with. So start small on some of the projects, maybe a pilot project that you would like to work on on a specific uh, development, let's say a, a new development that you would like to work together, a small project, or maybe even on some of the policies that you would like to work together with that company. So start small, and from then, I'm sure it will bring a lot of different opportunities or different engagement where the general public will know, oh, there are two companies also working on SDGs, and more people will come in and join you as a uni union. And eventually, it's also good to partner with professional institutions like us, uh, I ICE or even Hong Kong IE, where there are professionals are also engaged in different roles um, in, in the community or in the sector, different sectors. So it's good to share with people whenever uh, you would like to partner with, with, uh, with different parties on, uh, on specific sustainable development objectives so that their, their voices are heard as well. And they know that um, you are passionate about sharing thoughts on SDGs. So um, this is how I would, I, I would suggest in approaching starting from, uh, from a small project. So like myself as well, I, I, I do a lot of voluntary work Aside from, aside from work. So I also start small in partnering with some of the NGOs and starting some of the SDG initiatives. So it's not only about money that we talk about. So money is, is for example, is like a, an ultimate goal when we do businesses. But when we think about it, it's about social value. So what we do as a citizen, what we, um, what we are responsible for as part of the community in making changes. So I would say start small, um, understand values, understand your visions and how to work together on a specific SDG. And then you'll grow on and on with the word of mouth. More people know about, oh, these two companies are working together, form a union and do something good for the society. Mm, very well said, Samantha. That's another straightforward one for you. Uh, can Samantha please repeat what is the third P apart from people and prosperity? Planet. So planet. people, planet, and prosperity. So people linked with um, society, planet, yes. uh, people, and society, uh, and prosperity linked with e um, economic. Okay. Um, the next one, the 17 SDGs could be competing priorities. How best to evaluate which is the most important to pursue? Mm. So back then, I remember this reminds me of um, the same question that I had in mind before. So uh, when we were in the UN, right, when, when I worked at the UN, so people would start fighting about well, what is the best number? So who, who, why not climate action as number one? OK, so like I, like I mentioned in the last slide, all SDGs are universal. OK, they are all universal. So uh, they don't have a priority. They are all at the same level. But then just that it also provides room for different countries to understand which is their priority. So let's say I put um, number one as, a, as an example. No poverty, it may not be the most critical problem for Hong Kong. So is, is yourself to determine or your country or your city to determine which is the most pressing issue for, for yourself. But these 17s in general are all the global challenges that we face um, in our daily lives every day. So there isn't a number saying which one is the most important, but I think always it's good that whenever I share with my friends, it's also good that you can think about which one you would like to make changes, which one is the most important to yourself as a human being, okay? As a young or, or as an active citizen, which one is the most important to you? And understand that and remember that as, or maybe it shows part of your identity as an engineer or different profession. So which one you would like to tackle and play a part uh, from it? Because everyone do have different priorities in their own life or different people may have different expertise. For example, some may be good at designing PV panels. Some may be good at designing um, uh, transport systems. So we all have different priorities as well. So that's why at the UN, when we, when we were drafting the goals, there wasn't a particular uh, number one, two, three, but then it's in general, they're all equal, they're all equal state, they're all equally important, just that different countries have their own different priorities as well. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I add, add, add to what you said, just said, 
Sure. Yeah, it's, 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 it's well said. Um, the priority is not only linked to the, uh, to the culture and the people and, and the geographic, mm. but it also changes with time. It changes with time. Time, which is a, the fourth dimension, in fact, you know, the fourth dimension. Take one, one, one very simple example. You know, our homeland, right, China. If you look at, I, in 40 years back, you know, when CCP was first established, no poverty is the first one single priority. You don't have to talk, talk to them 50 years ago about smart cities. I mean, people are living in hunger. I mean, basically, there are a lot of inequality there. So that, at that time, 50 years ago, no poverty is one. And about 25 years ago, when our chairman Tang came into place, that, 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 that family become more well off, right? So that is the next stage. Now, our chairman G is, is talking about share common prosperity because with, with time, you know, the society, the country started to evolve, the economic stance changes, and then their priorities changes. So there's no fixed priority at the time. So it's culture, it's geographical, it's also time. This is the essential factor. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Well, I think it comes to the end of this webinar. If you would like to continue the discussions with us on the UN SDGs, please join our uh, interactive session coming up on the 23rd of October, which will be held at Hong Kong IE headquarters. You'll receive the flyer shortly after this session. So look forward to seeing you all by then. Thank you. Thank you, Samantha. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good evening. Bye now. Bye. Bye.